Hey guys, what's up? It's Ola, and we're back with another tutorial. Sorry, I've missed the last couple of days. Just been working at a festival and uh, with some other stuff. So uh, let's let's go today. We're going to explain the next logical step in creating a project in After Effects. And the first lesson I showed you about all the windows and what they do. And uh, we know this is the project panel, so this is where all our stuff lives. Uh, this is our composition slash footage panel where we can watch. We've got our timeline down here and then all the other panels over here, which I explained briefly. So let's have a look at what I have. By double clicking any piece of footage, it will open in the footage window. So as we can see here, we've got, I'm going to fit this up to 100. We've got a, a rather large JPEG. This is 5472. And it's my friend Scott. And... Um, We've got some footage here which I shot on my 1DX which was actually shot at 120 frames but I've interpreted it down to 29.97 so that I can play it on the timeline at super slow motion. So if we have a look at what that looks like, I'm just pressing spacebar here and it's my friend Neil who's DJing at the festival yesterday. So yeah, nice and slow. And this is another clip, again the same, you know, having a good time. So yeah, this was shot 120, nice and smooth, nice and sharp. And, um, and last but not least, I have this, um, this little kind of cinema style intro. And this is a far shorter piece of footage. If we look here, it's only six seconds, as you would expect. Uh, this one stops at two basically like a lot of the cinema classic cinema countdowns actually stop um, a couple of blips before the end so uh, yeah we've got three pieces of footage now what's the next step because obviously we can view them in here but how do we get them onto the timeline well, to get them onto the timeline we have to make a composition and this is much in the way Photoshop allows you to create a document um, after Effects requires you to create a composition, but the difference between Photoshop and After Effects is in an After Effects project, you can create any number of compositions, whereas a Photoshop document, you open your Photoshop document and that's it. You have, if you want to do stuff on another document, you have to open another document, whereas uh, After Effects allows you to keep multiple compositions. Now, there's um, so many ways to do it. You can hit Control N, go to Control, uh, you know, Comp Settings, you can go to Composition, New Composition, even click down here on this little button um, and what we're going to be explaining today is what this dialogue means because if you're new to video you might be like well why do I why is it asking me like how long my project needs to be why am I telling it like how long the duration of the comp is can I change this afterwards and um, you know these are all really valid questions and questions that were not immediately obvious to me when I started editing and uh, using After Effects. So I'm going to try and explain those in as much detail as possible today. And then that way you should hopefully, when you open a project and you start making a new one, you'll know exactly what you want your composition to be. Now, there's my first tip would be if you are working to footage. So if let's say you have Halo recorded or you have footage out of a camera or any kind of video game you've been playing, you've got all that captured and you've got it all here. So obviously the first thing to do is import it into your project. So right click import, go find your files, bring them all in, have them all ready to go. Um, but the, the After Effects has a really useful kind of like, uh, I like to call it like um, a quick start, I guess. And you can drag a piece of footage from here because as we can see here, this footage is 1920 by 1080. This is HD. Like if these numbers don't mean anything to you, you should probably memorize them now because they're really important. This is HD, which has now become the standard for like video. If anything is lower than HD, um, it's, you know, even even YouTube tutorials, everything is at HD now at a minimum. Um, and if anything, you would be going upwards to 4K if you um, were trying to push boundaries. But at the very minimum, you should be creating projects at 1920 by 1080, in my opinion, anything lower. Um, I mean, it depends on your delivery format and where it's going out. If you're working for TV, then the stuff is still done at lower resolution. But uh, a lot of the time now, uh, HD is the minimum, and that is just 1920 by 1080. And that's where 1080p comes from. It's from the, um, the second number here. 
So uh, we have this footage, it's at 1080. Um, and when you hear me referring to something as at 1080, it means 1920 by 1080. It's shot square, which means um, things just look normal straight out the bat. I'll explain more on that another day. Uh, this one is two minutes long, uh, two minutes and eight seconds. Got this one down here, which is just 20 seconds. So I might use this one. And then, as I said earlier, I've changed it down to uh, just under 30 frames a second here. Millions of colors, and it's encoded with H.264, which my camera does automatically to keep files um, at a, a usable size, shall we say. So my, my first tip is you can drag this all the way down into this little uh, film strip icon and just let go. And what this has done is created a composition at exactly the size of my video. So if I come into, click on my timeline, go to composition, composition settings, this is the name of the composition that I have open in my timeline. So as you can see here, the name matches with the name here. So if I call this uh, Neil, is my, my friend's name, uh, you'll see it's updated here because when we go to composition, composition settings, um, we are now looking at the settings of whatever we have open in the timeline. And as you can see here, we've created a new icon, which is called Neil. And that's what composition looks like in the project menu. So here we have uh, our settings and there we have 1080, 1920 by 1080. As you can see, it's already recognized this as a preset because um, it has it built into After Effects, which is useful. Uh, we've got the aspect ratio at square pixels. Very rarely are you going to want to work with anything here unless you're working with TV or like a camera, which, you know, anamorphic lenses, which are lenses that kind of like stretch your, uh, squash twice as much image into like the frame so that you can have like super wide shots. Um, but most of the time, if you're coming straight out of a capture device or your camera or your phone, it's going to be square pixels. So don't even worry about that especially if you're creating stuff from scratch, always square pixels. Um, the frame rate pretty much depends up to you. Um, film frame rate is 24 seconds. Uh, here in Europe, our videos are 25 frames a second. In America, you play, you have NTSC TVs and they play at 29.97. Uh, you can obviously go up to like 60 if you have like high frame rate footage, but I would recommend as an output format, always being at either 29, 25, or 24, depending on what you're doing. Drop frame, just leave this to drop frame. Resolution, obviously you're gonna want it at full. Uh, you can change this uh, down here, I'll show you in a minute. Start time code, this has been determined by my camera. Uh, and the duration of the clip is currently as long as I have recorded the footage for, which is super useful. So what? After Effects is done by me dragging this down into the composition setting is it's created a composition at exactly the size of my video. So it's exactly the right length if I go through here. So it starts here at the start and ends at the end. If I drag this further, you'll see there's nothing behind. If I drag this here, there's nothing in front. It's created the timeline at exactly the right length. And that is a super useful trick to know because if you're coming, let me try and attempt to do this uh, for this clip here, so we have, uh, let, I'm going to go to composition, new composition. I'm going to call this uh, DJ. As you can see, because of the last thing we used, um, this is already right. So it's at 1080, 1920, 1080, 2997, which we know is the frame rate if we look up here. Uh, start time code, we want it to start at zero. That's cool. It just means that the first number on the timeline, the time will start at zero. As you can see in this one, it starts at like 28 seconds. So I can change that afterwards. And the duration, I would have to manually go in and go, oh, right, okay, so it's two minutes and you know, eight, eight seconds and 16 frames. So, and the background color shouldn't really make a difference if you're dealing with video because you're always going to see video. So I'm going to leave that black and hit OK. Now, as you can see here, I've got an empty timeline. And what I can do is then just drag this clip in and it should match perfectly. Um, the problem with uh, if you don't look at this information is sometimes you'll end up like making a composition that looks like this and, you know, you're your window is too big for your footage so you would then have to like 
uh, going to the composition settings and uh, and you know like scale down this to kind of try and match it and this is bad practice this should always be at 1920 by 1080 and your footage itself should um, match the size of your composition never the other way around so um, but you know if you're recording out of a camera or capture device they're always going to capture this resolution so that should never be a problem so uh, there we have it you've got your footage on a timeline um, and you're ready to go with this uh, you can uh, I can then show you how to start manipulating the footage in the next lesson so um, thanks for watching and if you have any questions about anything I've gone through please let me know